apologise, but anyway, it's good to have you on. Uh, our presenters are Tony and Anna. Okay. Um, and we're going to say Mark Sargent is the author of Flat Earth Clues and was the keynote speaker at the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference. And you join us from the United States. Is that right? Sounds good. Excellent. Okay. Um, so we're just doing an item on our business uh, news with uh, something on inflation in the UK, and then we're going to come to you in a minute or two's time. We'll take it up to the end of the hour. All right, sounds good. Um, we should have about five minutes with you, and when you start hearing some music quietly in the background, that's our kind of end of the hour theme tune. That means we need to start wrapping things up in the next 30 seconds or so. All right. Um, the presenters will guide you through that anyway, but it's just to, so that you know what's going on when that happens. All right. And uh, we'll be with you shortly. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Cheers. Hold back. Spend. Yeah, but they are. Thank you, Danny. Danny Houston there from uh, Five Life Money in Leeds. It's uh, seven minutes to five. Now, over the weekend, hundreds of people gathered in North Carolina for the Flat Earth International Conference. Attendees believe that the shape of the Earth is a disc instead of a sphere. Some of the arguments in favour of this theory that gravity doesn't exist and Antarctica is not the continent it appears to be, but an ice ring that encircles the flat Earth and contains the ocean. Mark Sargent is the author of Flat Earth Clues and was the keynote speaker at the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference. He joins us from the States. Hello, Mark. Hello, how are you? Great, welcome to the program. Thank you. Um, for those who may not kind of have the same belief system as you, just explain the Flat Earth theory in a nutshell in a minute or so. Sure, sure, I can do it in a minute. All the world's a stage and you are on it right now. You are in... A planetarium, a terrarium, a snow globe, a building, for, for lack of a better term, a sports stadium. And that building was discovered by the United States and the Soviet Union in Antarctica, the outer boundaries of it, in around 1960, and they decided to keep it a secret. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> hang on a minute. Now, what, what are they keeping a secret? Oh, they're keeping a secret that we are in an enclosed system, that the Earth is not a globe at all. It is a flat stationary object that is covered by some sort of firmament a dome uh, a structure of some sort and oh, okay that, you know, that's and they decided to you know create the space program the space race was an absolute sham it's the longest running television series in the history of the world okay because obviously, obviously that was going to be my first question Do, yeah. you presumably when you see pictures of the earth from space you oh, yeah. you, you presume that just that picture oh it, yeah no it's worse than you think i'm saying that the only reason nasa was created in the first place was to keep this thing under wraps for as long as possible and they did a great job of it for about 60 years but since about 2015 with all the new tech and social media and high-speed internet it's starting to unravel what is, what's in it for them? I, I'm saying them. I'm I, 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 some kind of global conspiracy to persuade us that the Earth is a is, is, is sphere shaped. Well, power, control. Uh, you know, you can't be the ultimate authority if you're not the ultimate authority. Uh, the last thing science and the government wants you to know is because remember, if it was built, then you've never been alone, and that's something they don't want to put in the public consciousness. And so, rather than disrupt economics and academics and spirituality they decide you know what let's just keep this thing you know, status quo so it's a it's a it's a it's a flat disc yeah like like some kind of cosmic cracker but yeah like like a dinner plate you know uh, oh. with the north what's underneath it well what's underneath with, with the globe the deepest hole we've ever drilled is eight miles so we don't even know what's down underneath us now it means so it's more of a cylinder than a flat disc then because uh, ostensibly there has to be a bottom to it well it's got to have some sort of thickness to it yeah but i mean we can't we can't tell because we even mainstream science the germans and the russians tried to dig bet, uh, further than 12 kilometers never could do it so yeah. we don't know what's down there well, okay, so why aren't we falling off the end, Mark? <laughs> because it's sealed off at the end. The, the Antarctic is the outer boundaries, and by that, the Antarctic coastline goes up about straight up about 200 feet. This is mainstream science. This isn't us. 200 feet straight up of ice, you know, not necessarily games of, Game of Thrones, and the, the whole continent plateaus out around, what, 14,000 feet. So that keeps in the water in just fine, and then the Antarctic continent itself goes back thousands and thousands of miles until the outer barrier which is why antarctica was sealed off in 1959 by the antarctic treaty no corporation is allowed to go down there ever for for yeah. all the history of time no matter how much money you have yeah 
Uh, so, so we're, we're, we're some kind of cosmic snow globe then, are we? I mean, uh, well, do, I do you believe in a spiritual creator? I do. I, it's, it's really tough to be an atheist if, if you believe in this because if you, know, if you believe in like an organic ball flying through space, it's like, fine, you can sort of go along with that because that's what we've been taught our whole life. But if it is a disc covered with a dome, well, then it was created by someone. Do I say well, it was that, created by Stephen King in a novel about 20, 12 years ago. Well, there you go, yeah. The, uh, I mean, I'm not saying necessarily it's the handprint of God at the outside of this thing, but it was created by a higher power than us. We didn't do it, so who knows? Who did Maybe. the dome? What kind of glazing have we got on the dome? Uh, it could be a number of things. You know, it could be a soft barrier, it could be a hard barrier, it could be electromagnetic, it could be frequency, it could be a heavy element, it could be a heavy water. Don't know, but I know that the Americans of the Soviet Union was trying to breach this thing for about four years, from 58 to 62, firing atomic weapons nonstop. And so they never could get through it. It's less a planet and more the world's biggest conservatory. Yeah, yeah. For lack of a lack of a better term, it, it's it that if you want to look, you know, ask what the shape of this thing looks like, just go to a, a whatever the closest sports stadium would be. You know, very wide, very circular, but the roof isn't very high. You remember, most of our civilization lives from sea level to one mile up. That's most yeah. of it. It's a very very shallow. Just to follow, we've only got 50 seconds left. No, when you, have, you, have you ever been in a plane? Of course I've been in a plane. So how do, how do you explain that curvature of the Earth that we can all see as we're flying? If you see the curvature of the Earth, you take a picture of it, hold a straight edge up to it in your laptop, and you email me. If you still think the, the, the Earth is a, a round, circular the, and I see it's a curve, I'll... Hang on, I'll, take I'll, a picture and the, the picture's flat. Obviously, it's a print. Well, you know what I mean. If you see a curvature in the picture, I will quit Flat Earth tomorrow. <laughs> uh, Mark, it's, it's been interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Alrighty. There's Mark Sargent from the Flat Earth Society. Mark, thank you very much indeed for coming on. Thanks, um, guys. I, I think, you know, it's not the most widespread belief, but it's, it's been very entertaining and interesting radio, so I can only say thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Really grateful to your, to your time, and uh, have a good rest of the day. All right, you too. Cheers just now. Bye. Bye-bye. And more live Premier League football than anyone else. This is BBC Five Live. It's five o'clock on Five Live. The following ad is being condensed for your viewing convenience. So I've been meaning to tell you about Geico. Mm. Yeah, I switched and saved some serious money on car insurance. That's nice. Yeah, and if, if you like saving money, Geico can help you with your renter's insurance too. Renter's insurance? Uh -huh. Nathan Oakley, and I'm a flat earther. I run several YouTube channels, I interview people about the subject, and I've been doing it for about the last couple of years. In my last career, I was travelling around the world as an international sales rep. And as I travelled around the world, what I observed on almost every flight was the same thing, which was lots of people staring at the back of their headrests and observing the latest movie, uh, drinking booze, falling asleep, whereas I would actually be at the back of the plane looking out at the emergency exit window, which had the widest viewing angle, and observing the flat plane below. That being the case, when I came across a Math Powerland video on YouTube and he uttered the words flat earth, not in ridicule, but in the same context as we're talking about today, it immediately was a eureka moment. I mean, I literally went and woke my wife up and told her that the earth was flat. Well, NASA were developed for the sole purpose of lying to us. Their only purpose is to perpetuate the globe lie. Every single story that is told by NASA has the subcontext that we live on a globe. The way they're faking things is with top of the line, absolutely cutting edge studio techniques like were used in the film Gravity. So they're using trapeze, they're on high wires, in order to fake us for as long as humanly possible. Well, that's a good comparison because the blockbuster movies bolster the NASA fakery. If you're watching Guardians of the Galaxy or Star Trek or Star Wars, the basis of that is that you are on a spinning globe. So the fact that Hollywood perpetuates this, this meme, this lie, this spinning globe lie, is the over-the-top suspension of disbelief. Whereas when NASA do it, they play their cards much more close to their chest. They always keep it nice and simple. So they're not going to be having um, Star Wars type battles in space. They're just going to have a zero G meal. It's much more downplayed. Um, <laughs> the Illuminati. Um, I don't know a great deal about the Illuminati. It's something that I've come across since finding out the Earth was flat or investigating flat Earth. It would seem that there are 
certainly families or bloodlines or secret societies that control certain aspects of our life. However, until 1972, we hadn't been up and checked. So for, to say that a secret society knew and was therefore perpe perpetuating a deception, I would say no. No, I can't prove it. I can only support it with evidence. So to say, do I need to prove it? I would say no, because the starting point is flat. That's what you observe, that's what I observe, and that's what everyone deals with in their day-to-day -day lives. I've heard every insult under the sun, and I think the reason we get these insults is because we are pre-programmed from birth to ridicule the idea of flat earth. We're told that it's a, a notion of philistines, it's something that we have progressed beyond. So I tend to not overreact to people who are insulting to me about the subject and try and ask them to either, if they're very combative, prove what they believe, which is the globe, or ask them to research flat earth. Well, I've never been to the ends of the Earth, so it's a difficult one to give you an answer. Is the moon fake news? No. But does the moon have fake news surrounding it? Yes, absolutely. Of all of the celestial bodies, it's the one that would most indicate sphericity, is that the right word, being spherical? And therefore, it's used by people like NASA to prop up the notion that we are li living on a, a sphere also. So it's used to perpetuate fake news. Do I get ridiculed now? No, it doesn't seem to be the case. A couple of years on, it's more like this, people actually wanting to know more information about the subject and doing a bit of research themselves. Um, so I think, it seems, things have progressed. I don't have an actual explanation for how the seasons work. I don't know what the sun is. Same technically goes for the moon. I don't know what the moon is. Um, and further to that, I don't trust any of the maps that they give us. Absolutely, it is fundamental to our state of being, it is fundamental to our existence. If we said they are right, the, the per perpetrators of the, the lie, if you like, are correct, then we are absolutely and totally insignificant. We are a speck of dust in a soup of nothing, expanding into a massive infinite space, space of nothingness. nothingness. Whereas the converse is that we are in an enclosed system, therefore we're it. But anyway, it's good to have you on. Uh, our presenters are Tony and Anna. Okay. Um, and we're going to say Mark Sargent is the author of Flat Earth Clues and was the keynote speaker at the 2017 Flat Earth International Conference. And you join us from the United States to start wrapping things up in the next 30 seconds or so. All right. Um, the presenters will guide you through that anyway, but it's just a, so that you know what's going on when that happens. All right. And uh, we'll be with you shortly. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Cheers. All back. Spend. Yeah, but they are. Thank you, Danny. Danny Houston there from uh, Five Live Money in Leeds. It's uh, seven minutes to five. Now, over the weekend, hundreds of people gathered in North Carolina for the Flat Earth International Conference. Attendees believe that the shape of the Earth is a disc instead of a sphere. Some of the arguments in favour of this theory that gravity doesn't exist in Antarctica is not the continent it appears to be, but an ice ring that encircles the flat Earth and contains the ocean. Mark Sargent. Is that right? Sounds good. Excellent. OK. Um, so we're just doing an item on our business uh, news with uh, something on inflation in the UK, and then we're going to come to you in a minute or two's time. We'll take it up to the end of the hour. All right, sounds good. Um, we should have about five minutes with you, and when you start hearing some music quietly in the background, that's our kind of end of the hour theme tune. That means we need